Good morning, guys. So we're here at Overland Camp Sur, and you know, the two, three days that we spent here was such a blast. And the drive here was a spectacular view, and you know, that's what just overlanding is about, you know, being able to see mountain views. They call it the Batanes of Camp Sur. And it was a very, very nice view. The trail coming was nice, and uh, you know, what's not to like? We woke up yesterday with a rainbow, and you know, we even have a sandbar in front of us, so everything is just picture perfect. Today, I want to share with you five things that will get you started for overland. So, you know, the first off, we need some sort of shelter. In these types of location, the shelter or when you're under the sun, it gets quite hot. Or if it rains, right? So, a type of shelter would be awnings, uh, maybe a side awning or a 270 degree awning it will definitely help a lot. And going with branded ones like uh, Adventure Kings, Front Runner, uh, th these ARB, TJM, these brands give you the quality of awnings with a UPF protection which makes a whole lot of difference in terms of heat during midday. Another, another part of tents or shelters that uh, for number one would be you can choose between a ground tent and or a roof tent. So a ground tent, I would suggest uh, the latest one that we have is called a brand called Polar and uh, the tents that we've reviewed, we've used it here, it's a uh, one thing that I like is it's a 360 degree with a mesh. So the air is just good with airflow and when it rains, uh, you don't hear it as much. So you don't have to rain, open the rain fly to get the airflow. So, you know, there's some technologies that tents provide that not everybody has. So that's a, a ground tent. But also another option which we, we always uh, advocate uh, on overlanding is the roof tents, right? So the roof tents, uh, you can choose between a soft shell or a hard shell roof tent. Uh, the soft shell roof tents usually give you more space because of four sides and uh, more airflow. But the downside usually with these roof tents are the soft ones at least, is a pack down time. Now on the other hand, we have the hard shell tents, which are for me the option that I always use because the setup and pack down time is just takes quicker, just about two minutes to open and close. And uh, just you can see it, like uh, what we're doing today, the pack down is just simpler. After a long trip, you would want to have the easiest way and efficiently to efficiently pack down your gear. Some of the tents that we would recommend are from brands like Adventure Kings, iCamper, and Mammoth. And uh, the reason we recommend these brands is, you know, we tested it and uh, so far the performance of uh, when we use it out in the field meets the standard. But at the end of the day, it uh, doesn't matter what tent you use as long as you have a type of shelter. Second, we, I want to talk about power. Uh, when we're on off-grid, uh, a power solution is always useful so that you'll be able to charge all your devices like the cameras, your drones, your cell phone, your router, your laptops, or even a projector for that, for that matter. Even your freezers can all be charged. Now there are two options when you talk about power. You have onboard power and you have portable power. An onboard power gives you a plug-and-play solution, meaning you don't have to take it out of the car. It's usually good when you're driving. Uh, the alternator will be able to charge your system while you're running. And when you park the solar panels, if you're installed with one, will just automatically charge that. One of the batteries that we use for our port of onboard power is a Newton Power. So Newton is an AGM brand that has a warranty for specifically designed for running uh, second batteries uh, because AGMs are really the way to go. But you know, there are also options like lithium, but uh, the lithium tend to be more expensive nowadays. But these are good options to consider when running an onboard power. So the good thing is it's just right there. The bad thing is it's quite heavy and it's not portable you can take out. Which brings me to the second option. The second option we have is portable power. Now the advantage of portable power, as, as it connotes, is you'll be able to move it around. When choosing these power power packs, it's important to look at what type of battery it runs. One, I would highly suggest a lithium battery or a lithium iron phosphate or LiPo4 as they call it. Because these batteries really give you the maximum capacity of draining. And with the LiPo4 batteries, there are already, already options that you can quick charge, right? Even for big uh, sizes of batteries, it quick charges in about two hours. So those are the newest technologies that give us the advantage when we're out there. Just imagine this, you're driving to a long destination, let's say you come here to Camp Sur or you're in, I don't know, drive to Baguio. You have an inverter inside your car. You can technically charge your portable power in the inverter and be able to full charge it once you reach your destination, just in case. So that, that's a game changer if you're really out there for a while. So that would be the portable power. Some of the brands that we like for uh, portable power, we have i4-Way and uh, the Mammoth G1000, G500. 
G300 and G160s. Which one works for you depends on how many things you want to run and what types of clients you want to run. Third is some sort of storage solution. So in an overland vehicle, organization in the rear of the truck is always important. So what we usually do is either we put a set of Titan drawers or a deck system just to organize everything in the back to make sure like you have one drawer maybe for your recovery boards or recovery gear, another drawer for your kitchen. So these are all little things that work. Now another solution is to use storage boxes like the Thor storage boxes. Um, those are little things that could uh, make, make your camp much more efficient. Fourth is a water system. We like to recommend water systems to be incorporated into the vehicle because on an off-grid or uh, you know remote location, sometimes water stores are not available. So we do have water tanks that we install in the back of the vehicle from like tank engineering or front runner. So these are water tanks that could be bolted on on a wheel well, on the rear of a cab. And usually we power this up with a small water pump to make sure there's water, on-demand on water, and that makes a whole lot of difference for your uh, overland trip. Fifth, I want to talk about is make sure you have a vehicle that's capable. An all-wheel drive or a 4x4 vehicle will definitely be a plus because of the locations that we go to. Definitely on sand and on wet mud, uh, a 4x2 vehicle might have a disadvantage on that. Not that you cannot go with a 4x2, but just because they're just limitations. So just understand what your car is capable of when you're going to a location that you want to go to. If you're with a 4x4 vehicle, I would recommend to do at least an all-terrain tire, maybe from Nito, a Terra Grappler. Or if you want a little bit more extreme, maybe a Ridge Grappler or a Trail Grappler would uh, be a nice upgrade to your tires. And of course, uh, the rims, I would recommend the Black Rhino rims. These, these rims haven't failed me in the five years uh, or so that we've been using these rims. And maybe a suspension lift would come last for me after you've outfitted your vehicle with all the weight. It's important to note that we compute the weight before putting the suspension. It makes a whole lot of difference to make sure nothing slacks, nothing sags, and at the end of the day, you have a safe and capable vehicle for overlanding. So that's it. The five things that I think would be important to get you started with overlanding. Everybody likes a freebie. So number six, I'll give you a bonus. Always do it with good company because at the end of the day, all the gear won't matter if you're not with good friends or not with good people. So the vibe is always important and do it with the right people, do it with the people you love. Just a few reminders. Always remember when you're traveling, especially in this time of pandemic, make sure to travel safe. Wear your mask if possible. Make sure you check with the local, local authorities on the locations you're going to. And of course, when you're there, remember to keep the place clean. I always go with Leave the place as it is because we like more people to enjoy it and we don't want to trash the place. Bring your trash home, pack it up. If it fits your car coming here, I'm pretty sure it fits your car going back home. So just some reminders and always drive safe guys. So we'll see you in the next adventure.